of energy. If you're going to raise a city out of the ocean, something's got to get real cold. Yeah. There's got to be something the, where, you, the, where you trade off. The anime series Full Metal Alchemist, yeah. one of their core values is conservation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens over here that doesn't negatively happen somewhere else. So you, you increase energy here, it's got to decrease somewhere else. Conservation of energy isn't exactly a value. No, but <laughs> they use it as a core of their magic system. Yes. You know, <laughs> which, which, they, which they violate on a regular basis and eventually say, well, it doesn't really all happen in this universe. We're actually stealing energy yes. from that universe. <laughs> yeah, but that's just, <laughs> it's an adding nod to it. That just yeah. redefines what you mean by universe. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry? It became discontinuity. The other universe stuff. But I appreciate the writers of that gave a wink and a nod to it. Yeah. You know, again, we have to accept there's some number of porcupines to get a good story out of somebody thinks. If you want fantastical stories like that, sometimes you have a wink and a nod. And sometimes just the writer acknowledging that this is sort of aiming where it wants to work yeah, is well, enough. They, uh, there's, uh, I did, was it Isaac Asimov wrote The Gods Themselves, where the entire premise of the story was leeching energy out of the universe? Mm -hmm. So, Oh yeah, I mean, it's, it, lots of people use this dodge. Yeah. Um, <coughs> the, uh, well, but the, prob the, if, the problem is that um, the, the leeching anything from a different universe into this universe it causes all, the, 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 the the greatest, another cascade of problems that's going to cause. Yeah. It's like, oh, we're yeah, leaching so water from another universe. Where the hell are we going to, you know, like, come on, wait a minute, you can't suddenly be adding mass to this universe. It's a close, you know, we're, we're, we're going to close. It means that it's no, not no, no, another no. universe. No. It, what it really means is it's not another universe. It's not another universe, it's just the pocket we haven't tapped yet. <laughs> or that the universe includes what we call it and what this thing is. Right. And it, argument on the basis of, well, it's a closed system, mean, it is. To me, sort of trying to use the dictionary yeah. to uh, uh, set the limits, and that, that trick never works. Um, oh, but language is completely made up. Come on. <laughs> we just agree that language works. That's true, <laughs> that, which is why real, real science is done with math. That's right. <laughs> um, but, but again, you know, he gets to, a, to, uh, to an important point, is that the reason why it matters is that the field is here to tell stories. It's not here to predict the future. There was a long discussion on a techie list uh, that I follow recently with really, really, really bright people on it um, who were criticizing the golden age of science fiction because they didn't get the technology right. They said, well, they had this, and they should have known that, and you know, protocols, and you know, this. And it was maddening because they clearly had entirely lost sight of the fact that they're putting the technology in to tell a story and not realizing that hindsight is 2020 and that everything that they were saying should have been obvious, trust me guys, wasn't then. No. I really I recently reread um, Doc Smith. Mm -hmm. I read, you know, Triplanetary and, and wonderful, just just heartening quaint Sorry. old tales of where where, you know, yeah. Racism. The blaster has always got bigger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, xenophobia and, and racism is rampant. We don't give a damn about. We'll gladly wipe out somebody else's planet and culture just to preserve our own without a care in the world and go have dinner afterwards. Yes. You know, and, there's and a, virtue and evil are racial characteristics. Yes. Yes. You know, Race always oblivion. Yeah. We know that he's they're evil because yeah, he's yeah. oblivion. Um, but it's interesting that fact that in his story, he's talking. You, you read it, and you think, why isn't he's like they're obviously talking about nuclear energy. The terminology is all wrong, and it doesn't seem. And I realize he's writing about nuclear energy before nuclear. We knew that nuclear energy, nuclear energy was only a concept. That there was a mere possibility that someday we might be able to split the atom and harness this energy. Smith is writing in an era before, long before that ever existed, and he's foreseeing it based on what physicists are telling him. And he's writing a pretty good story and getting it relatively right. In a lot of ways. The thing is that back then, and, you know, I remember reading all those things yeah, too, yeah, yeah. and uh, all of the all the people thought that they would there would be machines for extracting the nuclear energy yes. out of you know nuclei and producing it into power. The idea that we would use it as a replacement for coal for heating water and turning it into steam, steam. 
you know, they would have been so disappointed because it's it's just not sexy. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. You know, he talk, yeah, they talk about you know converting directly the energy. Although we can do that. You know, we we actually gotten to that point. Where we can take the nuclear energy and convert it directly into the into electricity without ports on satellites in space. As long as nobody's around, them because oh yeah, there's that radiation problem. A little tiny radiation problem. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, I mean, look don't at my. Don't you want your kids to have five eyes? Sure. Why not? That'd be great. Um, I mean, one of Heinlein's first great stories was. You know the, the 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 world police force that took over and said, right, do what we say, or we're going to douse your city with uh, radioactive dust. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to hold you radi as as we're going to hold you hostage with radiation. You know, and it would have. You know, the thing is, is that he got the technology wrong, mm -hmm. but he got the political. Oh yeah, because it's right. not a, it's not a physics story; it's a political story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but he he predicted the doctrine of mad and and the um, standoff that. Actually worked for half a century. You know, nobody's knew each other since the, um, the first couple. Of them. Anybody read Neil Stevenson's uh, Seven Eves? Mm -hmm. it, I, I like I, I liked it and hated it at the same time because, and mostly I think it's because I also <coughs> hate Stevenson's writing because he's way too meta and he's very he's very too inside jokey. Um, he's too meta about stuff. He's terrible at naming things. Mm -hmm. You know, like no one would talk like that. <laughs> no one would think like that. But a lot of his concepts are strange. It's a um, one day for reasons never explained, something collides with the moon and shatters it into pieces, like five huge pieces. Something, some, something extrasolar came roaring in, either aimed or just completely accidentally breaks the moon up. And everyone goes, oh, oh, okay, we're okay. Nothing, you know. Nothing, nothing went wrong. No, oh, well, that's interesting. So it became a novelty for a while that, you know, the, the pieces of the moon were all given names. Because the, the, the mass is all still there. It's just broken into pieces. Which means the gravity is still there, which means it would can yeah. coalesce and re-sphere. Well, their, you know. that's the problem with the story. And, and, and no, that's the, the, the problem in the story. Is, yeah, okay, we got these great pieces. And kid, they had contests, the kids named the new pieces, mm -hmm. you know, like that. And yeah, and so they're, all, they're all turning, and then suddenly they're like, you know, bash, bash, as they would. You know, they would collide and come together, and you know, gravity's going to pull them together, but you know, uh, acceleration's going to collide them together, and then they're going to break apart. And but then they're going to get kind of elastic and break up, but enough of it breaks off, and then more breaks off, and more breaks off, and they suddenly realize, wait, this thing's going to grind itself down to smaller and smaller and smaller pieces. It's not. There's not enough there to, to for it to recoalesce. That's not true. Well, it coalesced the first time. Yeah, but it had help. It got coalesced into heavier bodies who helped pull it together in Earth's orbit, and then it, it moved out. Now, it's all ejecta from the Mars body that hit the proto-Earth. True, okay. But still, there's also the additional mass of whatever hit it, too. Well, no, but that didn't stay around. That was the problem. It, it moved through. Well, you have the Earth, you have the body that came in and hit it, and at that point, it's all one body. Yeah. You know, the yeah. question is, what got ejected out in exactly. what orbit, and but did the, it coalesce? See, the problem was, as the bodies got smaller, they they, they weren't recoalescing, so that the they didn't have they were, they were losing they were, the, the mass was getting spread out. So now the Earth is starting to pull on it. You know? No, no, that's not how okay. I'm, I'm I'm misexplaining it, but he explains it better in the book. Okay. Um, but anyways, basically what happens is all that all that material eventually starts raining down on Earth. Yeah. Okay. And it also got decelerated, so you're losing orbit and all this stuff. Anyways, but um, again. His, his writing is infuriating in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And you know, in a few years, like rebuilding the, the International Space Station as a, as a, as a colony ship to, to remain in orbit, it's like, oh god, it just got worse and worse and worse. It get piled up and piled up. It's like, no, wait, you can't run a reactor like that. No, you can't, you know, you can run out to the thing and bring back a water asteroid to, to mine off to get water. It's like, no, <laughs> it just got worse and worse and worse. And I've heard so many people go on about this book going, oh, it's wonderful, it's terrific. I'm like, this is a horrible book. And you're so, you know, Which book is it? it's called Seven Eves. Okay. And it's by Neil Stevenson, who usually writes better than this. Mm -hmm. And I was really disappointed with it because it's like, yeah, the science keeps falling apart and falling apart and falling apart and falling apart and falling mm -hmm. apart, worse and worse and worse and worse. And, uh, and then let's not even talk about his biology. Because the entire, <laughs> yeah. you know, let's face it, well, you've got the entire human race is, is killed off over time down to seven women. 
that's it. There's seven women alive. There's no men, and they have balonium cloning technologies where they start building people up back to a planetary mass where they can actually start repopulating the Earth. Kittry had more women, but she also did a story on that basis. Yes, but she did a much better job of it. Well, yes. She understood the social implications of such things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kittry had much better grasp on what actual social interactions were like mm -hmm. and what the actual dynamics of the people. It, all the people, that the, everybody who was descended from each of these women ended up with the personalities of that person. You know, so all the the Maryisms were all the, politi the political people who who did those sort of things, and this guy. Yeah, yeah it's like, <sighs> what do we have? Race, that's, that's, race memories here. And, that's the thing uh, I liked about Houston. Houston is that there were like eleven thousand people who based on two hundred different clones I think. survived. It. Yeah, and yeah. Um, uh, and all the clones, of course, were um, of some were individual. Uh, and over time, they build a library of the range of characteristics yes. that they would have. All the it wasn't ones. destiny, but just a constrained statistical universe in which you would probably fall. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but biology, for some reason, seems to be the weakest part of almost any science fiction writer, because very few of them, you know, it's like, it's like biologists, biologists don't become writers for some reason. <laughs> Sadly, yeah. Um, the, I mean, little things that always make me fall out of the story. So, you know, when I was watching a movie, when I was watching uh, Babylon 5, <coughs> um, and you have all these races, and you have, um, you know, Jakar, the Narns, and they all have human teeth. Teeth evolve the most quickly of almost all of the observable features um, as, a, as a creature moves from one niche to another. If you stop eating nuts and start eating meat, teeth get different, um, and very quickly, and it's very well adapted. Um, <clears throat> but you always see them with these, you know, bright burly, completely human, down to the canines, down to everything. Um, and after, after you start reading about this a little bit, it, it kicks you out of the story every time. And you have to consciously get back into it. So you were trying to remember what movies had come out recently. So I have a, a short list here of some that you haven't, you haven't remembered. Oh, so yeah, so Mad Max, Fury Road. Um, we fun, had fun movie, not really. Jurassic World. Oh, yeah. Oh. And <laughs> Tomorrowland. I, I, I like. And Jupiter Ascending. Um, well, we can also talk about Gravity and inner speed, uh, Interstellar. Yeah. Um, yeah, Gravity is the one that, like, I, it was like, I will say that I love Gravity from uh, watching a, a from from a, like a moving painting point. It was a beautiful movie. It was so much fun to watch. Things moving through space and all of that. That was great. It makes no sense whatsoever. The physics in there are so horrifyingly bad. It's actually a mix. Whenever yeah. they whenever they show any of the characters around the ships that they are currently intimately dealing with, uh, the physics is right. You know, and the uh, astronauts. Well, to a point. But the astronauts have said the things that I see them doing, I've seen happen really right uh, in orbit. Where it fails um, most immediately is the first time when they're up there, they're working on the Hubble telescope, and they say, oh, over there, that fixed point that does not move in our sky is the International Space Station, and that one just a little bit further on is the Chinese Space Station. Yeah, like they're all in the same orbit. At the same altitude. Yeah. There's um, so many reasons why that's just <laughs> painful. Oh, by the way, the debris going the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. The debris would go the other direction. Because you can't be in orbit, have something blow up, and have the, the stuff going this way. It's got to go that way. <laughs> um, no, the one that got me, I mean, again, the porcupines, I can accept a certain amount of it. The one that really pissed me off, so here's George Clooney's character and, 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 and uh, Sandra, Bull Sandra Bullock's character, right? And they're, they're, uh, Clooney's been you know, tossed aside. Which is fine, that's okay, that's great. And she does this elementary leap out to get him, okay, that's fine. She's tethered, and she grabs a hold of him, and everything goes taunt. So now we have a continual contention from Clooney to Bullock, down the tether, back to the station. Mm -hmm. Okay, inertia's done. We're, we're done. We're locked off. We've, we've scrubbed off all our energy. Yet, yeah. no, no, and he's like, eh, eh, oh, let me go, let me go. No, don't let him go. Pull on him.
And when you're all, you know, all she has to do is go, eh, and all of them are going to float back towards the station. <laughs> Just yeah. as pleasant as it ever could be. You know, they're going to have a nice, quiet journey, grab on the The moment that, yes. the yes. moment that tether, that could not possibly, the moment that tether goes taunt, that's it. You've, you've scrubbed off all the energy. Bang! And there was, there was a cosmic boing, and they stopped moving. Unless it's very rigid, a little yeah. bounceability will put a pull back anyway. Right, they should have bounced back. Well, they, they, you, you can see they were trying to address that. They couldn't. No, I'm sorry, there's well, no, I, I there's no address they, to that. But they, but they did at least nod in that direction. The, with the end of the, I think it was a parachute that was next to the station. She was, was, to, was yeah. slowly tearing. It, it doesn't slowly. matter. The mo I don't care what it is. As long as that went taunt, that's it. You've scrubbed off your energy. You've got nothing. There's nothing pulling George. He could, yeah. he could she could let like, go of his hand, and he would stay right there. But they didn't stop. They still had the energy. No, no, they stopped. They stopped. Even though the, the, the even though the thing is tearing away, the moment it starts tearing, all the energy has been transferred down that way. He can let go of her. They're all moving at the same. Them, the rope, the the parachute being torn away. The they're like they're but all in the same energy field. They failed finish tearing or snap when they pulled. They were trying. To no, they failed miserably. It wasn't even a, even the beginning of a good explanation. The best thing would be to do that he never she never grabbed it. You know, they they, 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 they can do the fumble 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 and he, and, he, and he's got a little more energy than and she he gets yeah. she gets into the tether and he goes off. Boom, the scene works. There we didn't have it. Mm -hmm. But the minute they grab hands, mm -hmm. they're safe. Everything's fine now. Mm -hmm. And we can get back to where we were going. Yes. Because, yeah, as, as he said, the moment that thing goes taunt, yeah, I don't care if it's ripping down there. You're going that way. Yeah, that's right. The moment elasticity is now. The law of elasticity is going to pull you back that way, and now you're heading back towards the station. Yeah, I seem to recall there's at least one other point where it was implied that the, um, uh, except, you know, the acceleration unit they, that they were using to actually move them from one place to another had to keep firing or they would stop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember seeing that and going, yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> so that was, that, was my, that was my beef with the scene in, I can't even remember the film, but it was another thing around Mars where they did that whole face in the mountain thing. Oh, yeah. And it's like, yeah, they're all talking about the fuel reserves. Okay, one second burst, take 10 minutes to float to the guy, turn around, another one second burst, take 20 minutes to come back, you're done. Yeah. I mean, gee. How hard was really that? Me. You know what's, what's, what's worse is? When a movie like Wally -E gets the physics better than a movie like Gravity. Because at one point, Wally has got a fire extinguisher. Sure, sure. He's, yeah. he's floating away from the station. He goes, Shh! you know, and he, he, little bursts, and you can see him go, Whoop! he goes off that way and goes like that. And li little bursts from the fire extinguisher, and eventually he gets back to, and then he can grab on the station. It's like, okay, that works. It's a drunkard's walk, but it it's works. It's a drunkard's work, but it, it worked. <laughs> yeah, I'm back there. And as long as you've got the life support, you can take your He's time. a robot. You don't care. You know, he but doesn't, but even a human can do that. As long as you've got the life support, the last sure. to get back to the station, well, you can use little jets. All uh, modern spacesuits, all especially you know, the U.S. and the Russian modern spacesuits, all have small jetpacks. You know, they, there's not a lot in there, but there's enough to kick a guy back and get him going in a certain direction with a couple of bursts. Mm -hmm. So if for some reason, you know, he, he misses a click, he misses the thing, he starts floating away from the station, he can orient himself, hit the button, he gets a little burst of, of hydrogen peroxide. I didn't know this. Oh yeah. The, 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 Is the, it really the modern, the space? The modern <laughs> suits all have, if you look on the side, if you see one of the modern suits, either the Russian ones or the, right. or the American ones, you'll see there's, there's four vents kind of on an angle on the back of the suit. Oh, I've seen and there's, there's, a, there's a were. small container yep. basically sort of a pressurized hydrogen peroxide down in the suit. So if emergency comes up, they can open the hat, you know, they, he can open the panel and then orient himself and go and get a, get a kickback towards the station. Now it's probably because somebody some genius in the, in the Pierre department said, okay, something happens, we lose a guy. The first question is, why couldn't they do something like this? Because all the, all the space uh, movies show that you can do that. And gosh, wouldn't that be an, an embarrassing thing to say? Yeah, if we didn't have something like that. <laughs> um, but it doesn't take a lot to, you know, to, to, I mean, obviously, if you had a huge, if you gain a lot of velocity or rocking it away, you know, you're mm -hmm. probably screwed. But well, most, again, like but, the gravity thing where you're basically flung off of the right. trebuchet. Right. But for the most part, the guys working around ISS, you know, putting girders together, the, the, the most energy they're going to get is, is, you know, they're going to yank their arm and move this way, and then suddenly whatever was going to restrain them didn't, and they go floating off. So that's about all the G you're going to you're going to move up. Well, of course, that also reminds me of the, uh, you know, line in the Rolling Stones, a uh, highline novel, um, where the wise old grandmother is saying, well, this reminds me of a guy that I knew on, you know, during the building of, uh, you know, Station 3, whatever, you know, uh, he 
had a bunch of girders. He thought he could start with a, if he started it with a pole, he could stop it with a bush. They had to take both legs, but I hear they saved his life. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hazel got all the best lines in the book. Yes. Because <laughs> yeah, uh, there was a scene in The Martian where uh, that Damon's character punctures his glove. Yeah, that, that, uh, um, And that, it's like, I'm sorry, if you got thrust here, you're not going to move straight. You're going to start spinning because yeah. you've got the... You're still still massive, yeah. Oh, that's, oh, that's the other was, one? You know, um, good yeah, that's, that's the other good one in The Martian when they... When they they're coming in and they want to, they basically blow the front hatch to, to we're gonna we're gonna blow the atmosphere to use it as a braking maneuver. Mm -hmm. It's not enough mass. Mm -hmm. There's just not enough atmosphere in that station to to <laughs> appreciably affect the, the speed at which they were going. It wouldn't really do much. You know, it would slow them down, but not a whole lot. Yeah, the atmosphere does I not have a lot. I actually want to see the math. See the math on that. Yeah. Well, you can figure it out. I mean. <coughs> You could do a rough calculation. I thought that was one of the neatest maneuvers. Oh, it's a great maneuver. But uh, the, the, the math has been called into question. If you think okay. of the volume of the, the, the station that they're dealing with. Well, maybe they hyperpressurized it. You'd have to, to, to a great deal. Yeah, it happened. Yeah, we're, we're, anyways, guys, we're about done. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah. This, this is the kind of